everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to learn how to highlight a complete row in a table in Tableau. So as usual, here is an overview of the content of this video. Of course, feel free to go to the description of this video and find the timestamp for the parts you're interested in. You can go straight ahead to part 4 if you just want to learn how to do this trick. However, I strongly recommend that you also have a look at part 3 where I'm going to explain the logic behind it. I think it's quite interesting and it might help you understand how it all works. So what is a good use case for this feature? Well, I would argue that we can use this feature whenever we have a large table, a table with a lot of columns, and we want to help our user navigate this table, especially if we have a scroll bar at the bottom. So this way, whenever they click on a cell, they will not only highlight the cell, they will highlight the entire row. So they will never get lost and no longer know which row they're looking at. Now, before we get started with building our highlighter, here is an example of how it will work. As you can see, the user can click anywhere on the table on any cell, and this will highlight the entire row. Okay, so what do we need to do in order to achieve this result? Well, we're going to need one parameter and one calculation. And on top of that, a parameter action. Now, I did not come up with this solution. And please have a look in the description for this video. I have linked the original source. Um, it's a professor that came up with this. And he actually came up with five different ways to solve this problem. I have chosen number four, uh, which is the one that I find uh, the easiest and the most to the point. Um, so in this video, I'm going to explain this solution and I'm also going to add on it by uh, explaining some of the limitations that I have found while using this solution. So let's start with the logic. How does this work? So what we're going to do here is we are going to try to split our table into three sections. So we are going to create a parameter based on something that we want. So if we want, uh, the original example has uh, IDs as the source of the parameter. Um, I have also done this with dates and you can choose a different uh, field if you prefer. But let's start with IDs. So we are going to create a string parameter and we're going to feed it a list of items. So a list of values from an ID field that we have in our data source. On top of this parameter, of course, we need to use the parameter in the view for it to work. So we're going to create a calculated field that uses the parameter. So the calculated field we're going to create is going to split the table into three. So number one will be all the rows above the one we want to select. Number two will be only the, se the selected row. And number three will be all the rows below the one we want to select. So how the trick works is we're going to put this field, this calculation, all to the left of our table. Whatever we put to the left of a Tableau table is going to split our table. So our table is going to be split based on what we have on the left. So this is the feature that Tableau is leverage that uh, <laughs> this trick is leveraging. And the second feature we're going to leverage is a row banding. Uh, so if we go to format in Tableau and we choose shading, we have the option of coloring, uh, of alternating colors for our rows. So we can have one row that's colored in gray and one that is colored in white, for instance. We can also choose to have two rows colored in gray and two uh, in white at a time, or three or four, it doesn't matter. We're going to choose one. And basically, again, that's all this trick is going to do. All the rows above the one we select are going to be white. The one we select is going to be colored with the color of our choice. And all the ones that are below are going to be white again. And they give this illusion that we're actually selecting that row. And last but not least, in order for the trick to actually work, we're going to need a parameter action. And yes, so this is the logic behind how to do it. And now let's get into how to actually do this trick uh, step by step. We're going to start out 
by creating the parameter. And if you have seen the previous part, uh, you know how already how to do this. You're going to create a string parameter, choose select a list of values and import values from your ID. It can be order ID, it can be client ID, uh, depends on your use case, of course. And once you're done, you can close the editor and go straight ahead and create our calculated field. For the calculated field, we're going to use an if then calculation saying that if our order ID is smaller than our select row parameter, then give me one. If it is the same as our select row parameter, then give me two. And if it's bigger than our select row parameter, then give me three. Okay, the next thing you need to do is to turn this field that you just created, this new calculated field, into a dimension. And as you see, I already have all the calculations done and I want to show you that they behave exactly the same way uh, by putting them next to each other. They both split the whole table into three and the calculations are perfectly aligned with one, two and three. Now we get to what I think is the most fascinating part of this trick, which is leveraging the uh, format shading, shading, sorry, <laughs> format shading functions of Tableau. So if we go to this part where it says a row bending, we have several options. So for this to work, you need band size one, level zero, pane, and header in the color of your choice. I chose this sort of purple here, but of course you can choose any other color you like. If you want to go for a more classic gray, you can do that too, right? So it's up to you. The important thing again is that you select both pane and header to be colored, band size one and level zero. The level has moved. So whenever you add a new field and you notice that the row banding uh, no longer works, please go back to format shading and drag level all the way to zero. All right, now let's get ready for the last part. Before adding a parameter action, we want to hide the header of the calculated field. So we're going to right click on it and unclick show header. As you see, uh, the formatting stays, we're just hiding this column, but it is still there. Now for the last part, we can choose whether we want to have a parameter action in the sheet or on the dashboard. So if you need it in the dashboard, I advise that you do it directly here. So I already have my action, so I'm going to show you what it looks like. So I went to my dashboard and I clicked on change parameter. And well, let's call it select row. Then of course I have just one table in here. So that, that table is automatically selected. We're gonna run the action on select and we're gonna choose a target param as target parameter, sorry, select row. And as source field, we're gonna choose order ID. Right, once you're ready, click on okay. And now, whenever we click on any cell in the view, it's going to highlight the entire row. And congrats, we're done. Now, uh, if you want to stay along with me, I'm going to show you what are the limitations of this. Um, and the first limitation I found is that <sighs> this is a bit tricky. So our users often want to you know, for instance, order by date. And that is going to be a complete disaster um, unless <laughs> dates and IDs are in line with each other. So there's, let's say there's one row per day uh, and they're chronologically um, consistent, then it's going to be perfect. But in this case, I just reordered the table, which was previously ordered by ID by date. 
So now if I select this date, okay, not, not many problems so far. Aha, uh -huh, we found the problem. You see, what happens here is that the table is reordering to have all the IDs above this one, like all the IDs that are smaller than this one, above what I just selected. So let's say there's a thousand IDs above the one I just selected. It will push my selection way out of my view. So let's scroll until I can find what I just selected. Oh my God, I can't even find it. Let's see if we use, if we show our header, where is the selection? Uh huh. It's somewhere in here, like you see, it becomes ridiculous. So this is the main problem with this solution, which is you really need to think carefully about how you want to order your table. Because again, if we go back and order this by ID, no problem. Let me, ah, okay, of course it doesn't work from the sheet. Okay, we order it by ID, no problem at all. Let me do it from here. You see, it's perfect. But the moment we order it by something else, it's gonna break. So uh, what I have done uh, in my case is I've done this whole process, but instead of creating a parameter and a calculation based on ID, I've done the same, but I, cre I created it based on a date field. So that would go like this, I would choose date, and then I select all values from order date in this case and click on okay. Of course, everything's gonna break. I'm just gonna create this again. So I'm, I'm actually gonna go into our three rows and edit it to have uh, order date instead of order ID. And I'm gonna do the same three times. Oh, mistake. Goes there. And there you go. Change parameter. Okay, limitation of this is, <laughs> as you see, in this case, it's just a date. So we have several fields with that date. So that can be also tricky. But if you have a date and time, this usually is not a problem. And you can let the user um, see the data in uh, chronological order, which can be quite handy. So that's everything on this topic. Please uh, ask any questions if you like. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you next month.